then take uh, the vehicle by the side and say, yeah, I'm here. You know what, what my dad was trying to do? He can just always say, yeah, you uh, go this way and then uh, you can reach home. That's not what uh, my dad did. You know, many of us do that, isn't it? We go that extra mile. You don't have to do that. That's what God is doing. He doesn't have to show us love. He can just simply say, you fellows rebel, get, all, get lost. I'm going to destroy you. We could have said that. And stop there. He did that with the angels. Atonement is a very powerful thing. To be able to show us that love, there are two things involved. One is the life of Jesus Christ and the death of Jesus Christ. Let's try to talk about what propitiation is about. Propitiation, you find this word as atonement. Look at uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 2. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. And you find many times he keeps using this word, atoning sacrifice, atoning. So, how did he want to do this? I want to tell you some historic stuff that you need to remember this. Okay? You need to remember this. So, how is this propitiation going to happen? How is the atonement going to happen? Let me answer you this question with one verse from Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 and 26. I want you to concentrate on this because it's got a lot of, lot of uh, uh, information and a lot of truth that probably we didn't see in the past. Look at this. Romans chapter 3 and verse 25 onwards. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. He, this, he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Did you understand anything? Can we read that again? Let's go slow. Okay. Look at verse 25. God presented him. Who is this him? Jesus Christ as sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood okay so when we have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ what happens there he becomes our atonement all right he did this to demonstrate his justice see this is the intermingling of the love and the justice of God I mean strange isn't it um, there's a poet who said uh, did he who made the lion make the lamb his head? See, the lion is different, the lamb is different. That's why when you go to sight and sound, outside, did you see that picture? That sculpture? What, what are the two creatures? Lion and the lamb. Can you imagine the God who designed or who made the lion also made the lamb. Totally different characteristics. So here you find how come the love and justice are intermingled here. Try to understand this part. Verse 25, second portion. He did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. What does it mean? We are talking about the Old Testament times. In the Old Testament times what happened was when people committed sin what happened? God forgave them. God forgave them. But without the death of Jesus Christ. Did you understand that? See, when did Jesus die? AD 33. What about the sins committed before? Jesus died later, right? So, whatever the sins were committed before, did God forgive those sins? Yes or no? Yes. But where is the death? The death happened in AD 33. So what God was doing was, He was in His forbearance, long suffering. He said, it's okay, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. But the point is, where is the death? Where is the shed blood? All those days, the shed blood was of the animals and not of Jesus Christ. So, now he has to show his justice. You get it? The God who loved is also now showing 
justice. Psalm 8510. Righteousness and truth. Peace. Peace. Mercy and truth. Now he says, in the past I did not punish. But now I am showing what? The justice. Verse 26. He did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time. Isn't it amazing? God forgives sins even without the death of Jesus Christ in the past. Wow. And he says, but he had to come. But he had to die for us on that cross. That is his justice. And therefore, there are two things involved. In the past he did not uh, bring a justice, but he forgave them. And then, now he is bringing Jesus and says, now you need to die for the people. How did he do that? How, did he, how do we become get, uh, how do we get that atonement? By faith in his what? Blood. By faith in his blood. That's where we understand this part. Did we die for our sins? Yeah, let me ask simple questions. Did, he, did, we, did we die for our sins? No. Who died for our sins? Jesus died for our sins. Did we go into the burial ground? No. Jesus went into the burial ground. Did we rise again literally from the death, uh, from the burial uh, place? Cemetery? No. But how is it that we are identified as if we died, we were buried and we were risen again from the... Look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Verse 3. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death? Look at verse 2. By no means we died to sin. Verse 4. We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. Verse 5, if we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. We didn't die. We didn't go to the ground. We didn't rise up. But the Bible says, you did it. Really? Lord, no, I didn't go. I didn't go onto the cross. I didn't go to the burial ground. How is it? By your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, it's such a simple, that's why the salvation is a free gift. You can simply get it. Just put your trust in me, I'll give it to you. That's what God says. So therefore, how is the method? It is by putting your trust in Jesus Christ. What is the need for uh, this uh, uh, propitiation? What is the necessity? Because there is something called the wrath of God. Right? There is something called the wrath of God. Now, what is atonement? What is propitiation? The wrath of God now must become what? Favor. favor of God. So, what is existing there? The wrath of God. So, this wrath of God needs to go away. Let me tell you this story. We all sing this song, In Christ Alone, right? In Christ Alone, beautiful song. There's a phrase called, The wrath of God was satisfied. Right? So this song um, became very popular. So this went to the Presbyterian Church. So in the Presbyterian Church, when they saw this song, they said, um, we need to discuss about this. Why? Because please remember, any Christian song is not just a Christian song. You need to look at the theology. You know what they did? The Presbyterian Committee sat down and they said, um, they called the authors of this song and then said, uh, we will sing this song if you just change the lyrics. I said, why change the lyrics? Because they said, you said the wrath of God was satisfied. 
They said, so yeah. But they said, we don't believe that God's wrath was satisfied. We want you to change the lyrics. So if you change the lyrics, we will put it into our books and hymnals. You know what? You know what is a big deal about this? Anytime any song that is written, and we put it on the on the screen here, or we sing, and uh, it shows up there. You know, there is a percentage of money that goes to the songwriters. That's why there is credits at the bottom, and it is illegal for you to take the words and then put it on a PowerPoint and say, "Yeah, we got this song." No, no, no. Somebody wrote this song, so they get the royalty. That's why we, when we project it, you find on our uh, uh, projection, you find toward the end or in the beginning, you find the name. That's the credits. And they said, well, you're going to lose a lot of money if you don't do that. They said, no, sorry. When Jesus died on the cross, the wrath of God was satisfied. And therefore today, even now, the Presbyterian church doesn't sing this song. The question is, if the wrath of God is not satisfied, how will it become a favor? See, if I'm still angry with you, how can I be friendly with you? Right? My anger needs to go. Therefore, we need to remember, the wrath of God was definitely satisfied on the cross. And that's why, when Jesus died on the cross, He said, I give my spirit unto you. Lord, I give my spirit unto you. He said, it is finished. And just before that, He had said what? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That same Jesus now says, receive my spirit. Why would God receive His spirit if He is still angry with Him, right? Therefore, what they think is definitely wrong. You get it? It is not biblical. The wrath of God was definitely satisfied on that cross. So there is wrath of God. There are several verses I want to tell you. Just take them down to talk about wrath of God. If you want to know where are the verses about wrath of God, look at John 3.36. I'll just give you a list. You can look them up later. John 3.36. Ephesians 5, 6, Colossians 3, 6, John 3, 36, Ephesians 5, 6, Colossians 3, 6, Revelation 6, 16, Revelation 11, 18, Revelation 14, 10, Revelation 19.15 These are a few places. There are a lot of places in the Bible, but these are the few places that you, that, that you can just pick them up. So, where was this atonement done? On the cross. In the New Testament, you understand that's on the cross. What about the Old Testament? We just read, we began our study today with that verse, isn't it? What is that? Atonement cover. Atonement cover. So, what is the law doing? That the 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 ten commandments in the uh, box, <coughs> yeah, they are telling you are wrong. You cannot do this. You cannot do this. What happened is, it's like you know the atonement cover is up there. It's all hitting here, but on the seat is on the top is what? Yeah, it's like this. You know, have you seen situations like this? You hear some stories. Um, let me give you a picture. See, you can't see anything behind me here, but I'm standing here, and from behind. There are some bullets which are hitting me at my back. You get me? There are some somebody shooting, and I'm standing here at the door, and I'm blocking that person from attacking you, and I'm standing here and taking all the bullets. I am standing as a wall, but what is on the other side to you? Safety. What is on the other side? Danger. You get it? There is somebody who is taking all the brunt, but on the other side, you see a nice peaceful thing. That's exactly what's happening with this mercy seat. The judgments of God are saying, thou shall not do this. Okay, you fail there. You hit, it keeps hitting you. But on the top is what? It's called what? Mercy seat. 
It's called mercy seat. And that is the uh, atonement that happened on the uh, mercy seat. The, uh, the Exodus chapter 25 and verse 22. We read that. Okay. What is the result of that atonement, propitiation? That God is justified in forgiving sins. Right? We read that Romans chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. We just read it, right? In the past, He did not uh, 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 bring a judgment, but He brought forgiveness. But now, through Jesus Christ's death, now He brings what? Justice, Justice as God. Justice of God. Right? So, in order for God's wrath to change to uh, favor, there are two things required, we said. What? The life and the death of Jesus Christ. There's one portion I want you to um, concentrate on, and then we will uh, try to understand the life of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Look at verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. When Christ came as high priest of good things that are already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. So, this is talking about uh, Leviticus chapter 16, right? Leviticus chapter 16 talks about what is called as Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement. The one day that high priest walks into the most holy place. When he walks into the most holy place, you know, there's a big ceremonial cleansing that happens and uh, uh, it's a very, very big procedure. And it's a very special day for the Jews. That's the day the high priest enters the most holy place. And when he enters the most holy place, those days he had to kill a bull. He had to kill the bull and then take the blood of the bull. But in the case, case of Jesus Christ, he did not kill a bull and take the blood of the bulls. Now, that's what Bible says. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place, most holy place, once for all, by his own blood. By his own blood. So, um, there's one more thing I want to, uh, you, you to understand. Um, look at this. Um, verse 24. For Christ did not enter a man-made sanctuary that was uh, only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. Now, does this also tell you that God's wrath was satisfied? Right? He entered with His most holy, uh, the most holy place with His what? With His blood. And when He, when he entered with the, mo uh, the most holy place with the blood, the next thing that we see is, He has now entered heaven. Now, how can you enter heaven unless God allows you? Right? No man can create a system by which he can go to heaven on his own, isn't it? So, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So the Father lives where? Up in heaven. God lives in heaven. So, if you need to go to heaven, you cannot manipulate on your own then be accepted by God. God has to accept you. So when Jesus went there, what does it mean? God's wrath was satisfied. So, the blood of the animals was only those days what? Temporary. But when Jesus died, you didn't have to do it again. See, this is where the difference is. On what day did Jesus die? Passover. Right? Passover. What is Passover? It started in Exodus. When they were, the Hebrews were in Egypt, they killed an animal and they shed the blood. Right? And then put it to the doorpost so that the angel of death will pass over and not enter inside. That's exactly Passover. And Jesus died exactly on that day. 
on the Passover day. So the animal had to be killed. It had to be bought on the 10th day of the first month and be observed and examined for 3 days and then on the 14th day of the first month that animal has to be killed. That's exactly what happened to Jesus there. While he was uh, hanging on the cross, you know what people were doing at home? They were offering the sacrifice. But once Jesus died on the cross and he was buried and rose again, no more need for sacrifices. But you find there are a lot of Jews who still do that. What does it mean? They have not yet put their faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. They think that even now, the animals need to be sacrificed. That's where the difference is. So therefore, the animal's blood was only temporary. The permanent blood of Jesus, the permanent was the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, now let's come to this part. 